Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. Today we're going to continue our conversation on universal gravitation, specifically explaining that shortcut I mentioned in the last video. And what shortcut is that? Well, last time I said big G universal gravitation is equal to G mass one mass two over a distance squared. And I said that little fg, the one we used in most of physics up until this point, was just mass times gravity. And I said that this was a shortcut for the version above, and really it's a shortcut that only works if we're talking about the surface of the Earth, like an object on the ground. But I do want to explain where this equation comes from, because really, these two equations are the exact same thing. So let me go ahead and show you now. First, let me draw planet Earth. It's got the little planets and continents there. Yep, beautiful. And you know, here's Europe, which connects to Africa, so something like this. And then maybe there's like a sea over here, I don't know. And I'll color it in, so here's the, the water. And then the land is green, so a little bit of green there. This really isn't necessary, but since I started, I just wanna finish. Okay, and voila, there's our beautiful planet Earth. And now we're gonna say that someone is standing on the earth on the polar ice caps or over the water or whatever. And so if I were to use universal gravitation, again, big G, mass one, mass two, over a distance squared, let's define mass one as the mass of the earth, which is approximately six times 10 to the 24th kilograms. Mass two, I'll just call mass of the object and I'm gonna leave it as a variable, I'm not gonna plug in a mass. And then the distance between them, you need to realize, is the distance from the center of the Earth to this person, meaning it's the Earth's radius, which I know to be about 6.4 million meters, or 6.4 times 10 to the sixth meters. That's the distance between the two objects, always measuring from the center of gravity, which is the center of the Earth. And now if I plug these variables into my equation, I get big G, which is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th, times mass one, mass of the earth, six times 10 to the 24th power, times the second mass, mass of my object, whatever that is, and then divided by the distance between them, which we're saying is the radius of the earth, 6.4 times 10 to the sixth, put that in parentheses, and then we're gonna square it. And now if I actually plug in these numbers, into my calculator, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th, times six times 10 to the 24th, divided by 6.4 times 10 to the sixth, and that's squared. Then this will simplify to 9.77 times the mass of our object. And so what you need to realize is that, I mean, there's probably a rounding error here, but 9.77 is very close to 9.81, which is little g. In other words, when you plug in the actual mass of the Earth and the actual radius without any rounding issues, you should get 9.81. And so another way of thinking about this, if I set big G equal to F little g, because like I said, these two things are equal to each other, and F g is equal to big G times mass of the Earth times mass of the object divided by the radius of the Earth, and that's squared, and I set that equal to m times g, where this mass here is the mass of my object, then the mass of the object cancels on both sides, and we have an actual equation for little g. It's the universal gravitation constant times the mass of the Earth, and then divided by the radius of the Earth squared. And that's where the equation for little g comes from. And it made no sense to talk about this until now, because all of these are just constants, and when you put them all in, they equal about 9.81. And so that's all I wanted to show you in this video. Hopefully you have a newfound appreciation for little g and big G, universal gravitation. So have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye bye